chapter 4. I think one of the most unusual stories in the Bible. First, the first nine chapters of the book of First Chronicles is all genealogies. And it's a whole bunch of names. Hundreds of names that are just make no sense to me. Or it, it made sense to the to the nation of Israel. It, and there's a purpose for it. And there's a reason for it. But there's it's, it's literally nine chapters of, of nothing but genealogies. And smack dab in the middle of that is the story of Jabez. Yeah. And most of us are familiar with the prayer of Jabez. And uh, I, I, uh, I feel a little bit like, uh, like I'm trying to steal another man's thunder today. But this is what God gave me, so this is what I'm going to speak. Uh, so in First Chronicles chapter 4, in verse 9, in the, middle of, in the middle of all these genealogies, it mentions this fellow named Jabez. Now, there's no, there's no lead up to it. There's no introduction to it. There's no, we don't know who Jabez's father was. We don't know who Jabez's son was. It's just these two verses that talk about this man named Jabez. And it says in, in uh, 1 Chronicles 4, 9, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. I want, to, I want to talk to you today about that word honorable. It says, Jabez was more honor, honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And so as I was, as I was reading that this, this week, when I saw that word honorable, it says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. The word honorable, like Holy Spirit, just stopped me right on that word. And so I started to ask him, I said, what was it? What, what was it that made Jabez more honorable than his brothers? And, and why, what is it about that word that arrested me, that stopped me? And it, it, don't, don't mistake that word honorable with receiving honor. It doesn't say Jabez received more honor than his brothers. It doesn't say he was given more honor than his brothers. It says he was more honorable than his brothers. It doesn't say he did, he did more honorable things than his brothers. It says he was more honorable than his brothers. Not, I, it's such a simple message today. But it's, it's important that we understand this word. It's important that we understand what God is wanting us to be. Because Jabez was more, it means he acted with more honor and he was more honorable than the, the people around him. It means uh, that he lived on a higher plane at a higher level than his than his brothers. And when it when it talks about his brothers, what it actually means is if you could put yourself in Jabez's shoes, it means that he didn't have anyone around him that he could go to to know how to live, to know how to make his decisions, because he was the he was the, 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 the bar. We talk about setting the bar. Well, Jabez was the bar. He was, he was the height of being honorable. So he didn't have 
people around him that he could compare himself to. When Jabez had a decision to make, he had to make his decision based on his own honorable, his own integrity, his own uh, morality, his own decency. He was more honorable than his brothers. He didn't have somebody to compare himself to. We're going to come back to that word, but I wanted to plant that seed in your mind. I, wanted, I want you to think about that word. We know what that word means. We know what the word honorable means. And it's, we, could, we could spend the rest of our time talking about and defining that word and what it means and, and, and how we're supposed to act if we're honorable. Uh, but being honorable, I asked Holy Spirit, I said, what is it that made Jabez more honorable? And he told me that it's a choice that we make. Being honorable is not something that's given to you. It's not something that's bestowed on some people and others. It's not. Now, there is such a thing as receiving honor. And, and we can choose to honor people. We, 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 we uh, have people in our lives, people that we bestow honor on. We give them honor. Uh, that's not what this is talking about. Honor is not something that is given to you by somebody else. It's also something that every person in the room has. It's a, it's a requirement that we live this way, to be honorable. But it's a choice that you make. It's like a garment that you put on to be honorable, to live your life with honor, to, to, when you make decisions, to base it on the honor that's in you, the honor that, that you were created to have. And it says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and everybody around him. Now, I want to, we're going to come back to that word because it's the word that God wants to speak to us about today. God is looking, seeking for someone, for a group of people, his people, to be honorable. And it's, it's, I don't know why, but it's intensely important that we get this today. That we know what it means, and we know what it means for us specifically to be honorable. To live our lives honorably. To make decisions honorably. Now notice what happened to Jabez because his because he was an honorable man. And I'm going to we're going to talk a little bit about the why and then we're going to come back to that word. But it says in in verse 10 it says because because it doesn't say because but because Jabez was honorable it says Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted this request. We're going to start at the back and move forward. I want to start with the fact that God answered Jabez's prayer. God honored the request of Jabez. It's important to understand that when you, when you pray what God puts on your heart, when God, when God leads you into a prayer, when God speaks to you, prayer originates in heaven. Real, real, what I call real prayer, true prayer, intercessory prayer, it starts in heaven. God puts it in our heart to pray something. Sometimes people think that praying is simply asking God for whatever it is they want. They have wants, they have needs, they have desires in their life, and they think that praying is asking God to, to help us with our problems, to help us with our agenda, to help us with the things that we want to do. That's not real prayer. 
Real prayer starts in heaven. God speaks prayer into your heart, and then you pray it back to him. Now, I've never exactly understood why it is that God does it that way, because it seems like if, if God wanted to do something, he would just do it. He's God. He doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like he would need me to be involved in the process. But nevertheless, this is what God did. He allows me to be part of what he's doing. Remember when in, in John chapter 4 when Jesus was talking to the, to the woman at the well and the disciples came back from town and at the end of that story how Jesus told the disciples, he said the, the harvest is white, the harvest is ready and he said you need to pray the Lord of the harvest would send forth workers into the harvest field. I always wondered why... Why do we need to pray to the Lord of the harvest if he's going to send the workers? Why did he just send them? Why, do, why, why is it I'm even allowed to be involved in this process? And I, I honestly, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know why God allowed me because it seemed like if, 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 it, if, if the result depended on me, that could lead to a lot of problems because I'm not always dependable. I've been known to fail. I've been known to screw it up. I've been known to, to not get it right. So I've often wondered, why did, why did God even include me in the loop? Because it's a loop that starts with God, comes down through me, and then goes back to Him. So why even put me in there? And I, don't, I don't know why He did it. I'm glad He did I'm glad he did because it 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 allowed and and, it, it, and maybe that's why he did it just so that so that I could be included so that he and I could have a relationship so that I could have intimacy with him because when I join him in what he's doing then I then I then I can be closer to him. But nevertheless, he included me in his work and and prayer, real praying. That's exactly what it is. It's God. He starts it. He says, I, I want you to do something to be something. He speaks it into my heart, and I pray it back to him. God always answers that prayer. Always. That prayer always gets answered. When you pray real prayer, when you pray prayer that God originates in your heart. That's why sometimes you can pray for things that you don't even know what you're praying for. You don't know why you're praying certain things. All you know is that something came into your heart, sometimes it bypasses your mind, and goes right to your heart, and you can pray things without knowing what it is or why it is you're praying something. But I'm going to tell you something. God always answers that prayer. Now, the other kind of prayer that we often pray, which is more based on what we want, or it originates from us, God may or may not answer that. I don't know. But I can tell you this. He will always, always, 100% of the time, will answer and respond to true intercessory prayer. It just makes sense because he started it. It's his prayer. So Jabez's prayer, it got answered because his prayer originated from God. So under, you, you need to get this, that, that God is going to answer your prayer. It starts with you being honorable. And when you're honorable, and as an honorable person, when God pray something through you and you pray it back to him that prayer is going to be answered the reason you need to understand this is because you might be praying something that seems bigger than what you are Come on. you might be praying something that is frightening to you you might actually be asking for something that you're not sure how you're going to fill your end of the bargain I believe that's what happened with Jabez. Because when we go back farther and find out what Jabez prayed, he said, it says, 
he cried out to the God of Israel. That means this wasn't a Sunday morning uh, church meeting prayer. <laughs> We've heard those kind of prayers. We uh, like we we pray them in the King James language. <laughs> you know, oh dearest Father in heaven, my my mightiest God of the universe, we come as to thee and beseech thee if that thou wilt answer us our prayers and descend from on high and so forth and so. Those prayers, you, you can't even understand what somebody's saying. The it's the kind thing. of prayer that when, when they ask somebody to pray, they don't really pray. They just stand up and they start it out by saying, Dear God, and then make a speech. And, and, but, but real prayer is when you cry out to God. Heartfelt prayer. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like sometimes it's something that you, it's, it's such a, it, it, it literally gets you wrenched out of you. Yeah. That's the kind of prayer that Jabez prays. It says he cried out to God. He was in he was in turmoil. He was in agony. He was not not agony. He was in a his spirit was crying out for something. I used to I, I, I well I still do, but when my kids were little, we raised five children, and I was scared to death because I knew that if I didn't get some help, I was gonna screw this up. And out of everything that I've ever done in my life, out of everything I've ever done, the most, one of the most important things to me was, it was raising my children. Amen. And when I was a young father, and I had five young children, I knew that I didn't know what I was doing. I don't know about you, but when my children were born, we went to the hospital, my wife got pregnant, her belly got big, we went to the hospital... They helped her get the baby out, and they put that baby in my arms, and they said, here you go. And there was no manual. There was no instruction booklet. I mean, you go to the supermarket, and you buy the smallest, most incidental, littlest, tiniest thing, and it comes with instructions. I mean, you can't buy anything that doesn't have an instruction manual with it. I mean, you go buy razors, and it has little instructions written on the package, how to use them. Warning, instruction. The most important thing you're ever going to do as a human being is to be entrusted with the life of a, of a little baby that knows nothing, and they put that thing in your arms and tell you, here you go. No instructions, no directions, no manual, no nothing. So I brought my kids home from the hospital, and we were young. Now, we had good family around us. We had good support. We had people to help us along the way, but they were my responsibility. And as my children got older and as they became, as they went from being little babies to, to little children, and they went from being children into to like young adults and so forth, all the way up through, everything I learned from, from doing it was no longer useful because they were in a whole different phase and now I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> Somebody told me one time the best way to, to raise kids is when they're, when they're two weeks old, you put them in a, in a box with a hole in it. To, you can put the food in through the hole. And you put them in that box till they're 13 and when they turn 13, you plug up the hole. <laughs> and, and so here I am with, with five kids and I, I'm, I'm scared to death literally because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up so, so I learned you know what I learned I learned how to cry out to God we were living in this house when my, when my kids were little and I, I used to go out at night late at night after everybody else in the family would go to sleep, the kids would be in bed, the Cindy would be in bed, I used to go out and walk, the, walk this property and just cry out to God. And when I say I cried out to God, I don't mean that you couldn't hear it because I was crying out inside. Prayer being but it was the cry of my heart. And it was a simple, direct prayer. God, I need help! <laughs> And that was, that was what, that's when, when it says Jabez cried out to God. Yes. It was something, it was prayer that came from heaven and was put inside of his spirit. And that prayer was wrenched out of him. It was, it was like, it was like the, his, his inside was just literally being torn out of him. That's the kind of crying out to God.
that I'm talking about. Yeah. It says, Jabez cried out to God. He said, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Now, when you read this, at first it seems like, well, Jabez was sort of a self-centered, egotistical narcissist. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. But when you dig into this, you realize that what Jabez was praying, what God put in his heart. And God is speaking to us today, and he's saying, I need some people that will pray this prayer, that will be willing to, to, to be blessed by me, that I can enlarge their territory. We are living in a time when, when God needs some people that he can enlarge their territory. Amen. We are running out of time. Yes. God is getting ready to do something that we have never seen done before. We are on the, we are on the very cusp of one of the greatest revivals and the greatest harvest in the history of mankind. There are literally millions of people that are getting ready to turn to Christ, that are, that are, that are uh, getting ready to uh, find out that everything that they built their life on was a lie. God is getting ready to flip the script. He is getting ready to turn evil into live. He is getting ready to, to show the world what evil is has been going on, and he is going to reveal that. And when he does, there are going to be millions and millions of people whose lives are going to be completely left without any foundation. Because they built their whole life, their whole world has been built on a lie. And that lie is getting, God is getting ready to expose that lie. And when he does those people are going to be left without a foundation. That means they're going to be floundering. They're going to be drowning. They are going to need somebody to show them the way. To help them find the way. God's needing some people right now who are going to cry out to him and say, God, I need you to enlarge my territory. Now, don't be too quick before you, you jump on this and throw your hand up and say, yeah, I'll do that, because you need to understand what enlarging your territory means. Because when you first read that, you might think, well, Jabez was just asking God to give him more stuff. Give me more land. Give me more property. Give me more money. Give me more so that I can be bigger. What he was really asking was, he was asking God, he was saying, I need you to enlarge my sphere of influence. I need you to enlarge my responsibility. Now this is a very scary prayer for a lot of us. Because a lot of us feel like we got more than we can handle right now. In fact, you feel a little bit like your, your world is, is, is on the verge of, of coming apart. You feel like you've got all you can handle and God is speaking to you today and he's saying to you, I need you to pray and ask me to cry out to me and ask me to enlarge your territory, to give you more responsibility, to give you more influence, to give you more people that are going to be coming to you and needing things. This prayer was not a selfish prayer. It was a heartfelt cry to God saying, I want you to enlarge my territory. I want more responsibility. I want more of what you're doing. It was the very heartbeat of God that Jabez was crying out. It's the people in this room that God is speaking to you right now and he's saying, I want you to be more, to be bigger. And we need to begin crying out to God and asking him to walk in his blessing, to be have our territory enlarged. 
to have our responsibility enlarged, to have our influence be made greater. He said, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm. He said, I need you to bless me. I need you to enlarge your territory. And I need, to, I need you to keep me in the palm of your hand. I need you to protect me. I need you to keep me. Because Jabez knew he was asking for something. He was asking for more than he could fulfill. God is speaking to us today. And he's saying, I need you to be more than you can be. I need you to get ready to do the impossible. I need you to join me because I'm getting ready to do things that no man can do. And we need to, we need to come into agreement with what God is doing. We need to put ourselves on the back burner. We need to put our, our own... Uh, sense of, of, of what we are and who we are, we need to put that aside and we need to step into what God is getting ready to do. Right. Why? Because God needs people that are bigger than what we are. Yes. We can't do this ourselves. You can't do this by getting more education. Hmm. There's no church in the world that has enough programs to prepare you for this. Hmm. This has to be supernatural. Yes. This has to be something, this has to be us being bigger than what we can be. It's time for us to embrace the impossible. To ask God to do things in us that we don't think we can do. Yes. To make us bigger than what we are. To make us, to, to give us, a, to give us a, an assignment that is bigger than what we can do. Some of you are scared to death by this idea because you already think your assignment is bigger than what you can do. But God is saying, I want to, I'm getting ready to do more and I want you to join me. Harvest time. Harvest time. Harvest time. It's good. God needs harvesters. It's he right. needs people. To pray this prayer. To say, God, I need you to cry out to him. God, I need you to bless me. I need you to enlarge my territory. Yes. Let your hand be with me. Because yes. I can't do this on my own. I can't be this on my own. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Good. Folks, the most frightening part of this whole thing is that when you pray that, God's going to answer it. <laughs> he is going to make you bigger and larger. He's going to give you more to do than what you can do by yourself. You are going to be forced to depend on Him more than you ever have in your whole life. More, Lord. We are coming in to a time, to an era, when God needs people that are willing to cry out to him. Enlarge my territory. Bless me. Enlarge my territory. And he's going to answer that prayer. He's going to give you more than what you can handle. He's going to give you more than what you can do. He's going to make you bigger. He's going to give you more responsibility, more people, more, more influence than what you're physically and, and mentally, emotionally capable of handling. But he also is going to keep you in his hand. He is going to take you by the hand. And he's going to lead you through this. That's why it's so important that we get the first part right. That we become honorable.
because it's only out of a sense, out of a, out of a, an ability to be honorable that we're going to be able to do this. Being honorable is not something that some people are assigned with. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you're given as a gift all of a sudden that you're, that you're given the ability or some people are honorable, some people are not. Because when I read this, the first thing I asked God, I said, what was it that made Jabez more honorable? God gave me a very simple answer. He said, it's a choice. Being honorable is a choice. Now here's the deal. You can't make that choice here today. Why? Because it would be easy for us to be honorable in this room. You're amongst friends. Everybody here would be cheering for you. Everybody here would be on your side. Everybody here would be, would be, it would be, it would be easy. But being honorable means every time you are faced with a decision, you have to choose whether you're going to make that decision based on your honorableness or whether or not you're going to base it on your own expediency. It's actually a very simple thing. Every time you make a decision, you come to a crossroads in your life. And every time you make that decision, and there's to the right and there's to the left. And if you look off to the right, the Holy Spirit is standing over here. And he's just a common, ordinary looking almost a drab kind of a personality. He's not jumping up and down. He's not waving his arms. He's not trying to get your attention. He's simply standing over here on the right, and he's saying to you, come on, this is the way over here, and he's pointing to a gate. And that gate looks kind of dim and, and, and dingy, and it's not very well lit, and on the, on, behind that gate is a path that sort of wanders off into the darkness. And you can't really see where it goes. And you're standing here at this crossroads in your life. And you're, and you're being asked, which way are you going to go? Are you going to go to the right or to the left? And the Holy Spirit is saying, here's the way I want you to go. This is the way of honor. This is the way that, that you need to go. And you notice over that gate, it says servant's entrance. And you're like, what's up with that? And so you're, you're trying to decide, am I going to go to the right? Because over here on the left is Satan and his angels. And it's quite a different story over here because over here Satan is waving his arms and he's jumping up and down and he's got on nice clothes and there's music playing. And, and there's, a, there's a party going on over here and there's this beautiful door and it's got neon lights flashing over it and there's people laughing and joking and they're having a good time and you look into that way and in this doorway is this wide beautiful uh, uh, path that goes on and on each side of the road is these, these concession stands with all kinds of food and entertainment and, and there's beautiful people over there and everybody there is having a good time. They're dressed in really nice clothes and everybody's having a good time and you're standing at the crossroads. And you've got, you've got this over here. And everybody's saying, hey, come on over here. And if you look over there, you'll notice that there's all kinds of people going that way. Everybody going that way seems to be having a good time. And Satan's saying, hey, if you come over here, this is you're going to have a great time. And over here, you've got the Holy Spirit. And he's standing here. And all he's got is a dark, dingy uh, sort of pathway that leads and you can't really tell where it goes and there's there's nobody going that way and so you decide you say well if I go over here the Holy Spirit's waiting and he puts a garment on you and he says this is your honor and when you put it on it's like a it's like a it's like putting on clothes that were tailor-made for you and I don't know if you've ever had clothes that were 
custom made or designed specifically for you. And it just fits perfectly. If you've ever, if you men have ever had a suit like that, you know what it feels like. It's just a, it just, it's a perfect fit. Maybe you women have had clothes that are, like you find that perfect dress or that perfect outfit that it's just, it just feels, it's just, it's you. And so when you come to this crossroads, the Holy Spirit says, if you want to come down this path, put this garment on. It's the garment of honor. And you literally put on honorability. And you're looking down that path. And you can't see where it goes. And the Holy Spirit says, don't worry about it. I'll take you by the hand. I'll go with you. And I'll shine the light. Every time you go to take the step, I'll be there with you. It's the garment of honorability. It was made for you. You were created to wear that garment. You were created. I don't know... I don't know if you were designed for the clothes or if the clothes were designed for you. It's just a perfect fit. It's what you were designed to be. Every one of us was created and designed by God to walk in this honorability. If you choose to go that way, he will, you will wear that garment. If you choose the left... As soon as you get over here, the first thing Satan's going to do is he's going to tell you, you got to take that honorability thing off. We got some flashy clothes for you. We got some. We got some really cool stuff. I mean, this is the latest in fashion. It's the it's the hippest thing. And they're going to put a garment on you. And when you put it on, you're going to feel like, oh, you know what? It just doesn't fit. You ever put a coat on that wasn't yours, and you realize it just just doesn't feel right. It doesn't fit right. But. You, you, yeah, you put it on anyway, and it's just—it's either too big or it's too small or it's too something or other. And you—and it, it's like—it's like putting on. You ever put on somebody else's shoes accidentally or on purpose? It, they just don't feel right. They might even be your size. But it's like—I like, I wear these shoes. They're, they're like my slippers. Well, they—they they conform to my feet. Right. I guarantee you, if you put them on, you wouldn't feel comfortable in them. Well, that's the way this feels over here. You, you put this garment on, and Satan says, here, you, you can put this on. It's, it's not yours. And you say, well, where did it come from? And he said, well, we borrowed it from somebody else. It's not really you. It's not really the identity that you were created to live in. If you want your real identity, you got to go over here to this honorableness. Come on, that's good. Paul. Because your identity in Christ was one of being honorable. That's right. If you come over here, and this looks this looks more convenient. This looks like an easier way. This looks like you'll have more fun. This looks like you'll have more money. This looks like you'll have more friends. You'll have more everything. It looks like over here. All lies. But it's all lies because as soon as you get there and they take that garment of honorability off you and they put on you a borrowed, a borrowed suit, a borrowed uh, clothes that don't even belong to you. And as soon as you put them on, you're going to know these don't belong to me. I don't feel comfortable in this. I don't feel right doing it. But the, they'll be there and they'll tell you, don't worry about that. Everybody's doing it. Everybody in there is wearing somebody else's clothes. And so you, yeah. you do it, and you, you, you take off this garment, this robe of honorability, mm -hmm. and you walk down, and you begin down this path. Here's the thing they don't show you. Here's the lie. When you start down that path, you don't understand, and you don't realize that once you get past those bright lights, once you get past that, that, all of the, all of the, the jazz and, the, and the, the, the lights and the entertainment and the laughter and the, and the facade, you don't understand, but those people are living in a dumpster. Come on, right. See, you're given the choice when all you see is you can go down this path of honorability or you can go down this path of dishonor. That path is narrow. And there's a sign over the gate that says servant's entrance. And it's dark. 
But what you don't understand, maybe you realize completely, is that path leads to the abundant life. Come on. Right. Because that garment of honorability that you put on will always keep you warm. That's right. It will always do what clothes are supposed to do. Because it's the garment that you were created and designed to wear. Yes. It will cover you. It will cover you. It will keep you safe. Yes. And yes, there's not a lot of company on that path. And you might not have the respect of the world. Because over here, they lie to you. They tell you that there's honor over here. We will honor you. But what they don't tell you is that that honor is meaningless. It'll turn to it'll turn to gravel in your mouth. Right. It, it wants it, it's honorability is not something that can be given to you. It's a choice that you make. You cannot go down that path and keep your respectability, keep your dignity. Keep your, keep your self-respect. Keep your pride. Keep your integrity. That's right. It all gets taken off when you take off that cloak of honorability. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That means every time he came to this crossroads, and, and trust me on this, you will come to this crossroads many, many, many times. And every time, you have to choose. Am I going to the right or am I going to the left? I love the fact that the Holy Spirit told me to go to the left and the right. <laughs> but when you, when you choose the left, there's nothing but lies and deceit over there. And you cannot wear that cloak of honorability when you go that way. Right. What's over here? Truth. Righteousness. Righteousness, truth, integrity. Mm. Folks, Satan and the world have been lying to us. That's right. And they have been feeding this lie over and over and over and over again. Those lies are about to be exposed. Joe Biden and his group are getting ready to, or they're trying to sell this country to the Chinese, to the, to the thing. There's no such thing as a Christian Marxist. Mm. Oh. No. Amen. Oh. It's just a lie from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Those lies are soon going to be exposed. God's going to expose and show what's going on behind the scenes. They've been hiding, they've been, they've been covering, they've been, they've been operating in the shadows, they've been operating, and, and, and these lies have been piling up one after another. The, the, the mainstream media has been in on it. They, they're the, the, the main, one of the main culprits. Corporate America's in on it, the government's in on it, everybody, everybody that's anybody's in on it. There are all these guys that are standing over there and they're saying, hey, come over this way, this way's brightly lit. This way here is, the, is where you're gonna find the greatest fulfillment in your life. And you can come over here, you don't have to tell the truth over here. In fact, we don't even like the truth over here. We don't like, we don't like having anything that's absolute. So we're trying to do away with all absolute. If you don't like the gender that God made you come over here, you can change it. You can just decide you want to be something else, and if you call yourself something else, you become something else. If you don't like the fact that God frowns on, on sexual perversion, come over here, you can do it and be whatever you want to do and be. We don't care, we encourage it. In fact, we don't want you to be honorable over here. We're trying to, we're, we're, we're dismissing it. We make fun of anybody over here that's honorable. Folks, that's all going to be exposed for what it is. And people 
are going to be looking. I'm talking about millions of people are going to be looking for someone that has honor, that has integrity, that has decency, that has morality, that has something that's substantial, something that something that will that will uh, be something they can stand on, because everything they've been standing on is going to turn to quicksand. And they're going to find themselves sinking. And they're going to be looking for somebody to pull them out of that mire. We need to be the ones to say today, God, bless me. Bless me, God. Bless me. Enlarge my territory. Yeah. Folks, we're running out of time. Yeah. We are running out of time. This is something God's been, been speaking to me the last couple months. We've been talking about worship. We've been talking about intimacy with God. And we've been talking about coming into a relationship that the world knows nothing about. Why? Because there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a time frame on this. We don't, have for, we don't have forever to do this anymore. My whole life... My whole life, I've always felt like, you know, there's always going to be time. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I saw things happen in 2020 that I thought could never happen. Yeah, amen. I thought it, we're so far away from that. Now it's, now it's been shown how it can happen. The enemy has shown his hand. But God is not done. God's not finished. There's going to be maybe just one more chance. One more time that we're going to have love. Are we going to be ready for our part? Part of the reason, part of the reason why God has been calling us into intimacy with him, into real worship, into knowing who he is and what he is, to having a, a, an intimate relationship with him. Part of the reason for that, not all of it, but part of it, is so that we would be available to help these millions of people that are going to be seeking something real. Yes. Are you ready to do your part? Are you ready? Is God calling you today? Has he put it in your heart? Is he saying to you, I want you to pray. I want you to ask me to enlarge my territory. I spent all morning on my knees this morning because even, even this word was bigger than what I could do. It was such an ironic thing for me. I found out. The, 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 the more simple the message, the harder it is to give it. This is such a simple word today. I'm, it's, I, it's, it's not complicated. It's, not, it's just, are you going to choose to be honorable? It's a simple, simple thing. I'm not, it's, I, 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 I kept telling God all morning, I said, God, I, it's so simple, I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up. I, I'm, I, how can I give such a simple word that is, is so important? Because I, you, you, I have this, this vibrating intensity in me. Yes. But yet it's so simple. I thought, how can something simple be so intense? It seems like it ought to be more profound, more complicated, more something. God is speaking today and he's saying, I have a simple, simple, simple decision for you to make. Mm. Which are we going to choose? Which are you going to choose? God's asking us to change the world. Yeah. That's all. That's all. <laughs> and it all starts, it, it all hinges 
on your honorability. Yes. And which garment you decide to put on mm -hmm. when you come to that decision. That decision, you don't get to make it here. It has to be made out there. It don't, you don't get to make it today. You get to make it tomorrow when, it, when you're all by yourself. When there's nobody around you. When, 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 when you're the only one that's standing at that crossroads. And you, you, you're not going to have a whole living room full of people that are cheering you on that are all in agreement with you like we are all here today. It's going to be made tomorrow. It's going to be made the next day. It's going to be made next week. And it's going to be a simple choice. Honorability to the right. Dishonor. strange thing. This whole story was two verses. Yeah. Right in the middle of a whole bunch of genealogies. Because yeah. right up to it, it is just one name after another. And I don't even recognize probably 95% of the names in the whole thing. Mm. And then right in the middle of it is this story of this guy named Jabez. And then in verse 11 it goes right back the whole bunch of other names that make no bearing on my life. But God is calling us to honor today. What will you choose when the time comes? I'm done.